Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to everyone discuss further into slant asymptotes and now look at example two, which looks at a horizontal hyperbola. And you can learn more about hyperbolas in my earlier videos as well as uh, future videos that I'll be covering the hyperbola in more detail, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, I thought I would do this example first and then use the result of this in uh, later videos on the hyperbola. So here the example states show that the lines y equals b over a times x and y equals negative b over a times x are slant asymptote lines of the horizontal parabola, I mean hyper, hyperbola, x squared over a squared minus a squared over b squared. Well, let's just jump ahead and look at the solution. So first of all, recall that the slant asymptote line mx plus b of the function f of x, equ uh, yeah, of the function f of x is defined as follows, as I illustrated in my earlier videos. So define the slant asymptote is what we need is the limit as x approaches infinity, yeah, of infinity like this, of the difference between f of x and the line. Yeah, so subtract this out by our mx plus b, which is just an equation of a line, m is a slope, b is the y-intercept like that. And then basically when you take the limit as as uh, x is approaching infinity, if the if this is an asymptote, they should approach each, each other. In other words, the difference is going to be well approaching zero, so it's getting closer and closer to each other. I.e., it's a uh, asymptote line. So let's go ahead and try to solve this. So first of all, let's determine our f of x. So we are given the equation of a hyperbola. So I'll write thus. Yeah, so thus, let's just write our parabola, or uh, I mean hyperbola down. So we have x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared. This equals to 1. So now let's just move this around to, to, uh, to get it in terms of y. So we'll move this over to this side, and then the 1 move it over there. So we get a positive y over there. And then what we end up having is basically y squared over b squared equals 2. So this one goes over to this side. And then we have x squared over a squared is going to be now subtracted by 1. And now what I'll do is I'll just multiply, well, both sides by b squared. In other words, just move it over to the other side. So we get a y squared equals 2. Then we have a b squared over a squared x squared minus b squared. And now what we'll do is, well, uh, we could uh, determine a or create a common denominator with this a squared that I'm going to do over here multiply by both by a squared over a squared uh, just so we can factor out now a b squared and a squared so that this and this are connected we could just factor that out so in other words we get you know we get over here and factoring this out we get b squared over a squared and then we can have a x squared minus a a squared, because this is taken with this b squared and a squared, like that. And this is what we have now. And now what we could do is just square root both sides. So square root both sides across here. Now when we do this, what we end up having is, well, this y, this cancels out. And then we end up having a plus or minus, because the y could be plus or minus inside. When you square root, it becomes positive. So at the inside, we have to account for the plus or minus. And now when we square this one, this was b squared and a squared, those squares cancel, so we're just left with a b over a. And then, and then we have over here, it's just going to be square root x squared minus a squared. Yeah, so this function here, uh, this is our f of x function now. Like that, well, we have uh, two parts like that. Yeah, we have the plus or minus, but I'm just going to combine it all into one. So we have f of x like this minus now the line. And we're supposed to show that these lines right there, the plus or minus, b over a times x. So well, what I'm going to do right now is, well, thus I'm going to put this all, combine it all together, just because it's easier. And also, the limit as it goes to infinity is similar uh, as well, uh, going to negative infinity as well for the uh, domain which, yeah, which the function, uh, yeah, it exists for all of you. Even if put negative infinity inside here, it's still going to be valid. So negative or positive, whatever x value is going to be squared, uh, etc. And again, make sure after my earlier video on the derivation for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this all in on <laughs> all together. I'm going to take the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity. doesn't matter which one, as I will prove in this derivation. And now what we're going to do is our f of x is going to be this. I'm going to, I'm going to include the plus or minus. doesn't matter what it is. It's still going to get our asymptote line. And then this is an x squared minus an a squared. 
And then we have to subtract by our mx plus b. So we're subtracting it by this mx plus b, which is our line. And this is our line right there. So y equals uh, right here plus or minus b over ax like that. And this is just a <laughs> quick strategy I like doing. Just we could simplify it all in one go. And now we, what we could do is factor out this plus or minus b a, and there's one over there as well, and factor it out of the limit because those are just constants as uh, just just applying limit laws. As you can see, my earlier videos on limits put some of those in a link in the description below. So we we take this out because it's not going to change the limit. It's just constant. So take out the plus or minus b over a like that. And we get a limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity. Yeah, like this. And then we have, I'll put a bracket like this. Then we have square root x squared minus a squared. And then here again, we remove the plus or minus b over a. So we have just minus x like that. So we have a subtract by x like that. And now what I'm going to do is very interesting stuff. You can multiply the top and bottom by, uh, I believe it's called the conjugate just so we can get a bunch of cancellation because we have this part here, this term minus this x, what we'll do is multiply this by the positive or uh, added x, I mean plus x side. So this is the exact same thing but we're just going to make it a plus so we get some cancellation, I believe that's called the conjugate. I'll uh, double check later but but anyways it's the same, uh, the same method applies. So all we do is like this. We do a plus top and bottom just so we can get some cancellation. Yeah, so we get some cancellation as well as at the bottom we have other terms like that trying to see if it goes to zero by yeah, having a one over infinity scenario as I'll uh, explain. So we have this part like this. So when we multiply this term by the top and bottom like that, what we end up having is a plus or minus b over a limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity. So now we can multiply this out like this. So we have this by this, multiply those together, or the square root cancel, so we're left with, I'll put this like this, x squared minus a squared, and then this by the positive side, we get plus x square root x squared minus a squared like that. And then we get, uh, now we multiply this negative x by this one. So we have now uh, this side like that. So we get minus x square root x squared minus a squared. And again, that's why we do it. So then these will cancel. And now this negative x by the positive x. So we get, just get negative x squared. So now we have a bunch of cancellations. And then we divide by the bottom part here, which is square root x squared minus a squared and then plus a plus x like that. So notice what we have here. So we have this one cancels with this. This cancels with this. Now all we're left with is a negative a squared. In other words, just a constant there. So this equals to plus or minus b over a limit as x approaches. As x approaches plus or minus infinity. Doesn't matter which one. So we have negative a squared and then we have at the bottom here square root, like this, x squared minus a squared plus x. And now, as I showed in my earlier videos on limits, when we're going to infinity, uh, we look at the highest power here and then divide both sides by the highest power. In this case, it's just x. This one, x squared, and when we square root, it's still, still going to have an x as a high power. So we have a 1 over x on top, 1 over x at the bottom. And then see what happens here. This becomes plus or minus again. Uh, b over a limit as x approaches uh, plus or minus infinity. Again, it doesn't matter which one. So we have negative a squared over x. Square root, I mean, yeah, divided by square root. And then we have 1 over x. So I'll show you how this works out in a bit. Then this is an x squared minus a squared plus over here, x over x, like that. So what we have now, this cancels becomes 1. This right here, we could write this as a uh, squared and then square root of a square, so just x. Just so we can divide this inside, then because the square roots, uh, you could just put that inside, then the x squared, we just divide it up. So this becomes plus or minus b over a of limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity. And then this part there, just keep it writing it like that. Uh, minus a, a squared over x. And then we have in here square root 
then the x squareds cancel, x divided by x squared is to be one, and then we have negative a squared divided by x squared. Negative a squared over x squared like that, and this part just cancels, becomes one. And now when we uh, plug in this infinity sign, so this one here, what we end up getting on the top is gonna be a one over, or negative one over infinity. Uh, and then uh, in other words, this is approaching zero on the top as well as, let's leave it like this, it's, it's, so it's approaching one over infinity. This part right here is when we plug in there x, it's gonna be approaching square root one minus, and then we have right here is just a number over, it, again, plus or minus is gonna be square root, when we square it becomes positive. So again, one over infinity, infinity squared, so infinity. And then we have a plus one over here, like this. So notice what we have, we have this goes to infinity, this goes to, yeah, this is, this is going to zero on the top. And then this part right here, this is gonna be a uh, divided by, or this is approaching a square root one, this is gonna be one plus one there. This, this goes to zero there. So this goes to uh, approaches zero. So we have just a zero over a constant over two. So in other words, this all approaches zero. <laughs> so this equals to zero, there it is. Yeah, or in other words, this approach is uh, over here, zero over two, <laughs> and that's just zero. That just equals to zero like this. Yeah, so we could just write this down. Thus, y equals to plus or minus b over a, either one in, e, in either direction as x goes to positive or negative infinity. These are slant asymptote lines. Asymptote lines. This is some cool stuff. Yeah, now what I've done is I've graphed these out or graphed an example here. So let's graph a simple example with a equals to two. So then this would be uh, two at the bottom and then b equals one, so b is one. So we have uh, y equals plus or minus one over uh, two. So in other words, we have it over here. So here uh, I graphed using decimals calculator, y equals one over two x. Again, this equals two b over a. So the b is one. Uh, a is two. And then the y side here, on um, the the negative side, like that. This is a positive. This is a negative. And those are the lines. Those are just these dashed lines going across. The negative one goes down like that. And then we have the hyperbola x squared over two squared. In other words, this is a x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals one. And then there's the graph. It's a horizontal. Um, yeah, horizontal hyperbola, just going outwards to the left and right. I just call it horizontal like that. And then a later video, I'll show you for the uh, upwards one in a later video. And that's going to be the asymptote lines for that. It's just going to be the same, but you switch the A and B, as I'll explain. So yeah, very cool cross or X shape of the slant asymptote line. Is, but yeah, pretty cool X shape. Anyways, that is all for today. Hopefully you followed along this uh, yeah, pretty interesting uh, derivation or uh, proof video of... Uh, the slant asymptote line of a hyperbola. And again, stay tuned for later videos as I'll uh, go over the hyperbola in more detail. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below as well as viewing these notes on Steemit. Also in the link description below. Follow me at MES. And uh, yeah, make sure to join my private uh, Discord chat room out of there. Just go there and talk with like minds. And also check out my cool math and science uh, forums at uh, amazing math stuff on Reddit and book. It was all for today. Thank, uh, yeah, it's all for today. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another math easy solution.